Welcome to today's tutorial on trigonometry with obtuse angles. Now this is one of the more challenging concepts within trigonometry um, I guess just to understand. Okay. Um, obviously we've been looking at uh, right angle trigonometry and we've been using um, our rules for our soccer toa. Soccer toa. Okay. Within the right angles. Um, so a couple of things I'm, I'm going to point out. Um, to start with, we're going to be looking at um, the angles within the right um, the right angle triangle. So what we're going to look at is we've got a grid here. We're simply going to look at a right angle here, and we're going to be looking at the theta, obviously the angles. We're going to call this the point A B. Okay. So that's the point AB. Remember our A is the X coordinate, B is the Y coordinate. This would mean that our, that our A would be the, the length, I guess, of the base of the triangle, and the B would be our height. So if I was looking to, to write out some um, trigonometry ratios for soccer tower, in this case, actually we've got to put, I should put my C on there as well. Okay, we could look at our sine theta in this case is opposite over hypotenuse, our B over C. Our cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so A over C. And our tan theta equals our opposite over adjacent, B over A. Now I know this is just general stuff, so obviously there's no actual values, but something to, to point out that when we talk about, um, I guess, angles within our first quadrant, remember this is called our first quadrant, because it's the first quarter of our um, of our plane. Um, all our values here are positive. So when we're looking at, and I guess if you talk about this particular angle and want to give it a sort of a type of angle, we call this an acute angle. So when we talk about acute angles um, within trigonometry, our values are always positive. Okay, as you can see, they're in the first quadrant. Um, it works out that way. But sometimes we look at what we call obtuse angles. Now, you might say, well, what do I mean about obtuse angles? What happens if we had a triangle such as this. It's not very straight there. Okay, we want to find theta. Now, obviously, with right angle trigonometry, we can't find that. So, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to draw a right angle triangle here. Okay, and I'm going to talk about theta there because if that's theta, if I know what that angle is there, then this angle is simply going to be 180 minus that amount. Okay, so what I'm actually going to be looking at is the distance or the the right angle triangle on the left hand side. Okay, this is where we're going to, and this is the reason why I'll be showing this this first step. Um, I'm going to come back to this. So sometimes it is useful for us to look at, as we saw, this right angle triangle in the second quadrant. Okay, the second quadrant there. Um, and I've come back to this because I want to look at the values that we used here. Obviously, if that's B, okay, that's our y-axis, this is still B, okay, this is still positive. But what about our x values? If that's A, that becomes negative A because it's on the left-hand side of our x-axis, of our x values. And this is still going to be our values of C. And I want to see what happens um, in this situation. So if we look at our sine values for the second quadrant, our sin is B over C. Our cos is our adjacent, which is minus A over C. And our tan values for theta is opposite over adjacent. So B over negative A. And what you're going to notice, in the second quadrant, Sine is still positive. However, our cos and tan values are actually negative. 
okay our actual um, cos and tan values are negative um, sometimes we have a rule that might help people um, and, and we often use this rule called all stations to Cronulla or all stations to central all stations to Cronulla or central and what that means and obviously we're only looking at the first two quadrants but actually it means that all the signs sin cos and tan are positive in this one it just means sin is positive so it means that our cos and tan are actually negative in the third quadrant it means that tan is positive sin and cos are negative cos is positive sin and tan negative etc um, now we only deal we don't deal with with that bottom part okay in general maths we're just focused on those top two parts so again you think well, okay I know that my sin values are positive for the first and second quadrant um, I know that my um, cos and tan values are only positive in the first quadrant I can understand that but what does that mean um, well first of all we can check some values so let's say for example I'm given a, a value of cos 140 degrees okay straight away you can see it's an obtuse angle because it would have to be in the second quadrant because it's 140 degrees so the fact that we know it's in the second quadrant I can automatically guess that cos is negative in the second quadrant so cos 140 will be a negative value so let's do that on our calculator we get 0 0.766 to three decimal places so it's, it's, it's negative uh, if I get a value for um, sine and that's sine 30 degrees because we know it's an acute angle because it's 30 degrees that means it's in the first quadrant I automatically know that sine that the value of sine 30 is going to be a positive value um, in this case sine 30 equals exactly 0 0.5 which is positive let's say for example I know that tan theta is negative 0 0.756 and I'm asked to find or we'll say whether or not theta is a an acute angle or is it going to be a positive value okay so it is going to be an obtuse angle well straight away I know that tan theta can only be negative in this case in my second quadrant so I automatically know that theta is going to be an obtuse angle because it's negative okay but you might not have worked something out yet there's actually an issue with this if we were to actually find out the value of theta okay now you could either put um, that straight into your equations mode to solve for theta or you could um, press shift 10 and your answer um, so shift 10 negative 0 0.756 we do that in our calculator we come up with a value of minus 37.09 degrees now obviously we can't have a negative degree but not but not just because of that we've got an issue because we know that it has to be obtuse but we've come out with 37.1 degrees so something's going on here so this brings us to the whole reason why we're doing this so I'm going to show you what actually what we found we've actually found this angle in the second quadrant here and inside there to be 37.1 degrees the issue is we're being told that it is not an acute angle it's actually an obtuse angle and what we're actually finding so I'll use a different color there we're actually finding this angle there okay how would I find that angle if I know that's 37.1 degrees well what we would do we would simply find the supplementary angle or which means take that away from 180 degrees so if we do that we do our 180 and we take away that 37.1 we're left with 
0.9 degrees. So we can actually find that angle because we know it's obtuse. Okay, by doing that. Now this brings to particular rules, okay, that we have to remember. And we've always spoken about the all stations to Cronulla business. So what we can come up with is a statement. I'm going to just redraw my triangle there. Put that as theta. So we've got some rules that we have to remember. So I'm going to say that sine, because remember this is 180 minus theta here. Sine 180 minus theta is equal to, remember this is the sine in the second quadrant, which is positive, so it's sine theta. Cos, obtuse angle, 180 minus theta, remember that's the obtuse angle, is equal to, because it's in the second quadrant, negative cos theta and then which is the same for tan so the obtuse angle of tan which is 180 minus theta is equal to the negative tan value of theta okay now there's some pretty important rules to remember but I'm going to show you a really easy way to, to, to think about this a really easy way okay so questions that will be given will be things like this if um, the angle is obtuse, find tan theta equals negative 1. Okay, so you would solve this as you would usually um, do. In your calculator, we're pre pressing shift tan um, negative 1, or if you want to put tan x equals negative 1 into your equations mode, and it comes out to be theta equals negative 45. Okay, obviously that's not an obtuse angle, so what we want to do is simply find the supplementary angles of that, which is simply 180 take away 45, which is going to leave us sitting out here with 135 degrees. And it's as simple as that. If it's not obtuse, okay, for example, it's acute, it comes out, then obviously just take it away from 180. Likewise, we're going to do sin theta equals 1 over 4. So put that into your equations mode or do shift sin. That's up to you which one you want to do. Um, 1 over 4, press equals. Now remember, we want it to be an obtuse angle. We get 14.5 um, degrees. That's not obtuse, so let's simply do 180 take away 14.5 we're left with theta equals 165.5 degrees. Simple as that. So just be careful. If they actually say that the theta is obtuse, just make sure that when you put that calculation into your calculator that it comes out obtuse. If it doesn't, take it away from 180 degrees, bobs your uncle. That is all they are going to ask you about this stuff. Otherwise, it's just going to be more um, or the harder questions on the sin, the sine rule and the cos rule. Okay, I know it's confusing, but if you can just remember, type into your calculator. If they're telling you it's obtuse and it doesn't come out to be obtuse, just take away from 180 and you're sorted.